let's start it off with with basically when you grab the book at the bookstore and you see a title like Be the Weight Behind the Spear. First of all, that's very poetic. I love that. And it's an inspirational. Where did it come from and how did you want to use it? Well, that Be the Weight Behind the Spear, it's my personal leadership ethos. Nice. So, you know, as I took command, you know, trying to find ways to, you know, motivate airmen, airmen and kind of a newer generation of Americans, I've worked with a lot of special operations in the past. And each one of these guys have had somebody in their life, you know, a teacher, a favorite coach, parents, you know, somebody has mentored them and giving them just the amazing confidence to do the things that they do. You know, me as a physician, I took care of these guys, right? I don't kick down doors and and do the crazy things that they do, but I take care of them. And I look at them as the tip of the spear. And so I want to motivate Americans to be the weight behind that spear. You know, we can't all do those crazy things, but we can definitely help raise the next generation of leaders, you know, to do those things. So that's, that's my personal leadership ethos. Well, I'll tell you what, though, this book is needed right now. And I mean, it's needed for every generation. I would love to see a Generation Z or a Generation X to read this book as well, because as they step into the business world, they need to be the weight behind the spear. Absolutely. What people don't realize is that this younger generation just, you know, what I've seen as, as, a, as a commander and some things with just kind of lack of leadership and accountability and just some things, business leaders need to get involved earlier on yep. because one way or another, this will be your problem. You're going to deal with these kids when they're coming out of high school or coming out of college that lack these skills, or you can get involved right now and coach or be a mentor or do something in your community to help build the skills for these kids because they will get to you at some point. The earlier you can help them out with that, the better. I've always believed that businesses need to send their employees into these schools and, and teach them real life events. In other words, not, not to sit there and, you know, try to turn them into YouTube superstars or something on TikTok, but rather to look at life the way that it's supposed to be and, and participate with your community. That's something I grew up in a real small town and I felt they did a very good job of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I was in high school, I I, I got mentored by one of the physicians in town. My mom was a nurse and kind of helped arrange that. And then the hospital actually had an internship program. They got high school kids uh, involved in in just healthcare in general and just learning some other life lessons from a pretty early age. And I think that's something that we can can replicate in every community. I, I feel very fortunate. I just had some great mentors and coaches and teachers yep. and and I got to talk about them in the book you know it's kind of difficult uh, when when we we've had those gifts from 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 the universe where people have met, motivated us but then when it comes to your own grandchildren and they look at you like going I, I don't I don't need your positive dude I, I'm okay and it's like oh my god what's going on here and I'm sure you deal with that as well my grandparents had a huge you know part to play in my development i I know when i was a younger kid my my, my parents had got divorced and i was a little bit of an angry kid and got into some trouble and i some of those stories in the book obviously you you can read about those but my grandparents my my grandfather in general i just remember uh the the trouble i was getting into just in, in sunday school in church and was just horsing around and I, I literally did not get uh, through the confirmation uh, on, on time. And he sat me down and spent an entire summer just just teaching me some of those lessons, uh, having me memorize some of the passages that were supposed to be memorized. And, and just him stepping up uh, it had just a huge impact on me. My grandfather had, had a big part to play in who I am. Oh, yeah. I, I grew up in the state of Montana with my grandparents having that big farm down there in Wyoming. Oh, man, taking care of those chickens early in the morning, that's responsibility. And, and sometimes I wonder if that's what's missing. Responsibility. Go do some chores. Get people involved in their own life and grow forward. Yeah. See, my dad was raised in Montana as well. He was raised out in Alberton oh and from, uh, yeah, outside of Missoula. And just from a very young age, um, the, the stories that he tells and the expectations from, from his parents – you know, those things are, are critically important. I, I try to do that with my children. Um, you know, it's uh, be, being the weight behind the spear for my own kids. So what, with the book, Be the Weight Behind the Spear, and I know that you talk about it's time for employers to raise the bar, but at the same time, I would love to see the younger generation read this book, study this book, activate this book, take themselves to that business and help raise the bar. Don't wait for the boss because the boss is just waiting to fire you because if you don't show up on time, but yet if you go in there with a winning attitude, don't you think that'll change things? That's 
you know, the book was written for, for, for that generation to hopefully learn some of these tools. The whole first section of that book is just, you know, how to be the weight, what type of skills are important, leadership, accountability, overcoming obstacles. And, and the big one that, that I see a lot that lacks in the younger generation is, is the ability to j- just adapt. You yeah. know, they don't have the coping skills and they just can't deal with the smallest of, of issues. Wow. You you had me at hello right in the very beginning when you talk about America is divided and at a crossroads. I mean, all of a sudden I'm glued to the book because it's like, OK, this guy is speaking my street. He understands where we are. We're going to learn from this. The book just needs to come with a yellow highlighter. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I put a lot into that. And, and, and I'm hoping that, you know, I think everyone sees how politically and generationally divided we are. And I, I'm, I'll, I'll be 47 next month. It, it's, it's, it's the most divided I've seen in the country. Yeah. And I think a lot of Americans agree with, with your assessment on that. With you being with the men and women that have served this nation at the level that you are, and this, this is going to be a martial arts kind of a question. I remember looking through our school going, every one of us here have had an issue. Do you, did you find the same thing in the in those people that serve our nation and and you were called to help change their issue to inspire them to to look at it and walk and become stronger you know of the things that i've done you know in my career i've got to do a, a, a lot of pretty amazing things but as a commander that that's something that i have taken the most pride in yeah. is is helping shape uh, everyone has issues everyone has problems you know teaching them to adapt helping them and and being able to empower them to help themselves you know, I'm not there to spoon feed them and bail them out of out of problems, but I'm certainly there to guide them and, and lead and, and motivate as best I can. And, and I just feel like all of the people that have been a part of my life, that weight behind my spear, are now helping me do that for this entire generation. I've got a, almost 100 men and women under my command. Wow. It's, um, it, it's something I take a lot of pride in. When you're in that emergency room, how do you find your peace? How do you find your calm? That, that one is, is definitely more difficult because it's a it's a very stressful environment. You're making life and death decisions almost on a, on a minute by minute basis. And I have a pretty strong faith. So yeah. early on in my career, I, I remember the first case that I had of a of a, a child death. You know, it was a SIDS baby, sudden infant death syndrome. And I watched you know the dad carry this this baby in, and then the, the mother came rushing in after and. I mean, I, I could just see their world collapsing around him. I was trying not to cry myself and trying to find that focus and running through that code. Um, you know, we weren't successful. And why I went home and just, you know, I, I literally just had a monster headache. I was very stressed. And I, you know, I, I just said a prayer that, you know, God, how am I going to get through this? You know, mm-hmm. what, and, and, and really, I just went out for a long run. I just gassed myself until I felt like I was going to throw up. And, yeah. you know, and then the good Lord puts me in positions to just, do the best I can. You know, I, I look at it as he's working through me, and, and, and that's yeah. really the only way you can get through some of those things. Because I see, I see pretty much everybody th- at their worst moment, and I, I've seen people die from about everything you can imagine. And, and my faith is what gets me through it. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because I'm a firm believer that God works through us in a way that we have to drop the four walls of the church and get out there in the real world. And you have to create words that people can relate with that don't sound like preacher words, but yet, oh my God, you changed their life. I have seen some miracles when people, you know, ask me, you know, I've had had friends, you know, I've had friends and and some people just kind of ask me, you know, actually there there was a a podcast interview a couple of months ago. They just asked me, what what makes you think God is actually real? Because you talk about your faith, like, you know, how can you prove that? And I, I have seen like one or two cases of just absolute miracles that there there's no way that person should have even survived let alone had any neurologic outcome to be awake and speaking and actually carry on with their life uh there's no other explanation other than it being a miracle and and as a physician you know that's sometimes hard to say right you know i've seen a lot of crazy things and i've seen people live and die in, in difficult situations but there's just a couple of cases where there's just no doubt on my man mind that was an absolute miracle did you start this book off by being a daily writer? Did it come from a journal? Because it, it's so personal and so one-on-one. So, yeah, I dug back. I kept a journal, um, my, my combat tour in Iraq. So the, the, the first part of the book and, and the stories, uh, the aerosol mission, you know, I, 
a lot of those things, yeah, I, I hadn't, I try not to think about a lot, you know, cause there, there's certainly some difficult memories, but bringing those out for the book just, just makes it very, very real. Because, and, and then actually that helped me be a better commander as well, because now as I, as I dig all those stories out and I'm trying to motivate airmen and tell stories and, and hopefully we, 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 we don't, have 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 a world war three that kicks off here but just the china and russia threats are very big yeah you know I, some of these stories I, i've been able to tell to my uh, my men and women under my command and and i, and I think they, they put things into perspective for them I'm so glad that you went back into those books to do that because I believe in the theory that dear future reader, in other words, we don't know who's going to receive our words when we put them down on paper and it could take several years for them to come out but look at what you've done yeah, that was back in 2007. Look at that. Uh, I, I had no idea. It was like, I, you know, I honestly, I didn't think I was going to survive Iraq. Yeah. So, you know, they, that was back in the surge early in 2007 in February where, you know, President Bush had, you know, called in, I think, 10,000 plus troops. And then one of them was me. And I was flying medevac missions. I, I flew one air assault and they started shooting down helicopters. So right when I got there, they lost eight helicopters wow. in a two week span. And the day I landed in theater, they shot down one of our helicopters. So I, I, I had a very real expectation that I was not going to survive. So uh, maybe I kept the, uh, the journal so my family could read that. I don't know. But uh, it, it definitely came in handy for the book. How have you survived with PTSD? Because I'm sure you've got it. My father had it, but we didn't know about it because nobody spoke about it. But yet you were there in that kind of a situation. It was it was very difficult to talk about a lot of those things for maybe the first 10 years. Wow. And then I worked at the VA hospital in Durham. And the, the first time I, I really kind of recognized where I, I was struggling was this this old uh, Vietnam vet was one of the physician assistants. And he sat me down and he just started asking me some questions and you start getting a little, a little nervous and sweaty and, you know, your heart rate's going up there. Just, just things that you try not to think a lot about. And, and he really sat me down and, and just over the several years that I worked there, I got to talk with him a lot. And I, I think that kind of helped, you know, that was him probably mentoring me on how to really kind of survive mentally yep. from some of those um, you know, things that I, that I had experienced. And, and I think it's maybe a better person, a better father, and definitely a better commander. But, you know, it's, uh, it's something that everyone, you know, has to deal with on their own. And uh, I've been fortunate to have a great weight behind my spear. You know, my wife, my, my parents, yes. um, my faith, all of that has been super important to me. Man, I wish you were living closer to the Carolinas because my wife and I are providing music tomorrow for veterans all the way back to the Korean War, Vietnam War, every war. And I just I cannot wait to be with those men and women, because just like you, you're inspiring. You, you, you just have something in your voice that there's hope, there's belief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I live in Apex, so I, I'm, I'm just outside of the Triangle area there, just outside of Raleigh. Well, dude, but, uh, we're, we're going to be in Salisbury tomorrow. All right. Uh, I'm overseas right now. Just a friend had a baby. And so we're, we're actually uh, spending some time with friends. But uh, I'll, I'll take you up on some of those offers for sure. Absolutely. Because, I mean, just just to sit down with it, because, you know, when it comes to the Korean War, I want to hear their stories, because what happens is that's the Cold War, the Forgotten War. And it's like, oh, my God, we've got to get in there and just listen to them. I know, and there's not many of them left. You know, I, I, I got to work with a lot of World War II veterans and then the Korea veterans in Vietnam. And, and now now all my wars from Afghanistan and Iraq and that that Korea uh, veteran era is they're, they're, they're dwindling quickly. Yeah. Wow. So where are you at these days or can you talk about that? And most military people tell me, say, I, I can't do it, dude. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Actually, just uh, I, I'm based out of uh, Andrews Air Force Base in Washington D.C. So I command at the, the an Aeromedical Stadium Squadron up at uh, where the President of the United States flies out of there wow. uh, at Andrews Air Force Base. And, and right now I'm just in Europe, just visiting a friend. But wow. yeah, we'll be back shortly. Wow, I can't thank you enough for even being with our country the way that you are. I mean, it's just, it, there's there's is there ever enough thank yous? You know, it, it's nice and it's something, you know, and, and you talk about Vietnam veterans. I make a point when I, I have a lot of speaking engagements and I always ask if there's any Vietnam veterans in the room and, and I thank them personally. Yeah. They, they, they were mistreated. Uh, I mean, spit on, just treated so much differently than I did returning from Iraq. And, and I always make a point to thank them. I feel very fortunate. Uh, people say, you know, thank you for your service when you're walking through in uniform because I travel a lot in airports and it always means a lot. It really does. And, and boy, I, I think the Vietnam veterans, uh, they did not get that. And I always thank them. Wow. Where can someone go to find out more about you? Because I have a feeling you're on a speaking engagement tour as well. 
I, I, I do. I, I've got a few of those lined up. So there's weight behind the spear.com. So W E I G H T. So weight behind the spear.com. And then for booking speaking engagements, I've, I've got a personal page of Josh McConkey for America. So J O S H M C C O N K E Y or for america.com and they can click on there for, for booking speaking engagements wow you got to come back to this show anytime in the future dude i mean the door is always going to be open for you arrow I, I appreciate it it's, it's always uh, uh it's been a lot of fun and i really appreciate your time will you be brilliant today okay yes sir hey god bless thank you